We're good to go. Good morning for me. Schaefer shop. Well, uh, uh, the surprise is mine because I was on holiday <laughs> for, for two weeks and I can't remember anything. Um, what's next? Well, well, what, what's next? Well, this, the, the first chart is presentation of the uh, Schaefer shop. Uh, uh, this is selling you my shop window now. <laughs> um, key facts uh, in a nutshell, so to speak. Um, then I will talk about the ranges and uh, product uh, uh, categories, and I will actually explain how the catalog has changed over time. For 40 years, we used to have f a big fat catalog, the thick fat yellow catalog, 1,500 pages, and I brought one with me. Um, but this has really changed over time. And uh, we have uh, uh, shifted to a modular catalog and the prerequisites we needed and some of the tests and the, some of the surprising results will be covered. And uh, to conclude, what's next? I have no idea. Next chart, share for shop. Well, we have office um, furniture, everything you need in offices, uh, uh, turning uh, chairs, uh, height adjustable desks, then everything you need for logistics, uh, shelving systems, uh, server cabinets, then the office supplies and uh, promotional products. So these uh, articles form part of our range. We have uh, a thousand colleagues, uh, have almost a million customers and are operating in nine countries. So we're not selling any blankets here, no coffee trip. <laughs> that was it. Um, my topic today uh, is entitled Puzzles for publishers. I don't know whether you've already read uh, my abstract. Uh, under Wikipedia, you can find the uh, term of puzzle uh, defined as a riddle uh, creating confusion. And I, I, I still wonder, and I'm always confused time and again, when I think about uh, uh, how sudden a printer's deadline arrives. You're probably familiar with this. It's like Christmas. Uh, you, you know, it's on the 24th of uh, December. Your mother-in-law will show up. Until the 23rd of December, this is far, far away for you. And then <laughs> uh, you've got the prezies, um, everything prepared. You check the data, everything fine and uh, and it's gonna work out last minute as always but um, this has almost become a daily routine on the other hand um, f photo shootings f shoots uh, incredible Th these products uh, are so shy they only arrive uh, last minute or product managers for instance who oh, want to uh, wait for the next trade fair to negotiate the price uh, with the supplier, the price that needs to be printed in the catalog. So everything arrives last minute. And only if you really say, oh, Okay, this page remains a blank one. We'll just entitle it with notes, and all of a sudden things get together. So what is a puzzle? You actually put individual pieces together to form a whole. And my first thesis, and this does not have anything to do with the film, well, um, customers is in, the customers are in focus, and hence they're standing in our way. We feel, we think that we're really focusing on customers we want and should uh, um, focus our customers but very often our customers do things we don't expect them to do I would like to whisk you away on a journey. Just imagine you were a mail order company and you had three pillars for your ranges in categories of goods uh, and uh, you've learned over years that the, uh, you stack these products and that there's a certain process, a workflow, and um, when you actually thumb through the catalog, you have a stopper page and everything builds upon each other. And you, for years, um, invest a lot of energy and your product managers do. And this is the ideal range and this assortment is just right. And then the range B and the range C is fine. And when you all put it together, then you end up with the main catalog, the principal catalog. All nicely stacked. And this... <laughs> made me end up with 1,500 pages of paper. This is great. 
but there's also weight. And uh, there's one thing that uh, this uh, ca uh, catalog is more uh, is better in than I in e-commerce. Great. You can actually uh, build a mouse trip with it. So if you have a problem with mice, this catalog definitely helps. But uh, this catalog contains 40 years of development efforts. Um, uh, uh, blood, sweat, and tears by many colleagues to get it done, to get this catalog finished. Nevertheless, we succeeded in replacing this catalog by this one without actually losing any customers, without uh, losing any loyalties, and without losing any sales. How did we do this? Well, we looked at the ranges again, and then looked at what our customers do with our catalog. The shopping behavior can look like this. The customer receives the complete catalog, but only looks at some categories of groups and only buys these, or he buys like this. Behavior two, behavior three. Even shopping behavior three would mean an excellent customer because this customer buys from all of the segments but only focuses on really specific groups of products or categories of products. And when you take a closer look at this, then you can cluster customers, break the clusters into customers and send them just this. And that is what we did. So f um, we only uh, selected the relevant parts from the thick catalog and forwarded these to our customers. So we were down to 272 pages. Th of course, we were running a risk there, but it paid off. And I will talk about the benefits a little later. Uh, purchasing behavior. This was precisely my reaction and a number of years ago when our strategic team uh, sat down with our general manager and they also had this wonderful bar graphic, this bar chart that said, we can cluster our customers now, we know exactly what they need. And it would indeed be great to actually downsize the catalog accordingly. And the boss said, yes, we'll do it. And this was my reaction. Do you know what this means on the side of production? What about page setting? What about the list of contents? H how is anybody um, to handle such a catalog if we tear it apart and rearrange it uh, over and over again? The prerequisite back then were the f was the following. We knew um, from our customers that they researched um, our products in the web shop increasingly. So this is where they sought the product information. But the print channel uh, was still important as a trigger, prompting sales. A number of years ago we shifted some money to online from print because the overriding opinion was we have to support our web shop and we need a few more buttons and we have to improve the functionality and we take the money out of the print budget to do so. As a reflex, this is quite a good decision uh, because you have some money to improve your web shop. But the result at our end was that half a year later, our e-commerce had said, there is no traffic on our web shop. What, what's going wrong? We, we didn't do any print. And we were aware print uh, actually drives the web shop. So if we send out uh, printed matters, then you build pressure and you drive the web shop. And if you actually um, neglect the uh, print, then you also reduce traffic on the web shop. So a bad decision. Then cost reduction. Um, this was uh, uh, even an issue for us uh, uh, before the uh, paper prices increased. Such a big catalog costs money. We wanted to reduce costs, but without actually losing the relevance and the acceptance of this catalog. We said we want to remain relevant. This is really the key. If we do, we if we fail to compile the right information of our customers, then we're on the 
wrong track. Then, of course, we wanted to reduce risks. And this is why we opted for a modular uh, catalog concept um, instead of the big uh, book, uh, 276 pages rather than 1,496 uh, pages. Well, there is n no longer one office furniture title. This is uh, the uh, first and the other one. We have uh, supplies now, consumables. These are the focal interests of our customers. But you can actually break this down even further to the individual product groups to see what customers buy. So six uh, versions, one catalog, and all containing the relevant groups or categories of products. On the one hand, uh, we've got the ranges. Uh, we looked at the ranges and said, OK, we have eight and uh, 32 pages, which is easy for production. And each uh, uh, category of group gets uh, the uh, 32 pages, like the uh, t uh, turning chairs, and eight pages if they're not so relevant for our customers. Then we looked at the customers using AI. We have our own data warehouse. Um, well, whoever kn uh, has uh, looked into this, we have a scoping process. We have over 3,000 score points per customer. Um, but this enables us, uh, since we've collected customer data for many, many years, to act in a very targeted manner. Uh, this is a self-earning system. This is why I've entitled it AI. And what we often do when we have buy-in new addresses, customer addresses, then we create a digital twin after the second order because we know um, uh, how this customer uh, uh, reacts and which uh, product groups can be relevant. And this then actually results in these modules. Then this is, uh, these are the components of the catalog. We have the address carrier, because the postal services still insist on a postal address to go to. Uh, but this has been completely personalized. In other words, per address, uh, there is one address carrier with the right products, and they're not clustered. So it's a one-to-one -one personalization, and we group customers. And uh, this is 100% personalized. Um, service recommendations, product recommendations, uh, knowing that this is a customer who likes to call us, uh, that this customer will get information about our call center. If we have major customers um, uh, for facility business, then, of course, we would feature the sales service person. Then the title, the title motive, the product description on the second page. The only thing that is the same for each and every one uh, is the eight page Pages of service supplement, all of the module pages, the, clust uh, the cluster pages, uh, even, even the facts uh, are based on the uh, consumer's uh, shopping behavior. So this is a detailed look. This is the entree pages the, to the various modules. When you look at the transport part, it's different products um, uh, in, in, in the module. So they're completely different and personalized. And this is what it looks like when you try to <laughs> explain to a printer what you're supposed to do. On the left-hand side, you can see the individual parts to, to be printed. On the right-hand side, the compilation. The left column represents one catalog. And uh, you can see that uh, same modules actually feature in different positions. The most relevant parts uh, rank uh, higher than the uh, smaller, non-relevant modules. They're, they're actually, uh, they actually serve as teasers, so to speak. So customers can see what's relevant to them right at the very beginning of the catalog. Uh, we did this uh, with uh, Europe's biggest uh, print shop, Moon, and the then um, distribution manager. Uh, I, I, I approached him and I said, Reinhard, who else does such a thing? Who could we talk to? And he looked on the plan. Nobody else does this <laughs> like you do it. And I found this pretty cool. Um, on the other hand, um, we uh, had an issue that we could not exchange with anyone over it. Uh, we had to try it out to see what came out of it. 
Yeah, what are the pros and cons uh, when you start uh, such a project? Well, um, uh, lower production costs, 33% uh, of the original big book. It's uh, thinner than the original big book. We reduced uh, or saved 735 tons of paper for one uh, um, uh, edition. But 700 tons, that's quite a sizable amount. The uh, relevant uh, uh, part of pages uh, for the customer, and we really stress the term of relevant, it has not uh, diminished. Um, these were the gaps that the customers didn't read anyway. And this worked, therefore. Uh, what are the drawbacks? Uh, well, more complex planning and the plate change um, versus the standard version. For many, many years, um, we actually uh, put a lot of emphasis on actually um, the various language versions and the plate changes needed. Okay, the costs for this increased, but the increase is marginal. And uh, the bookbinder and the letter shop, well, they, they are really kept busy. This is uh, more... Um, efforts uh, than uh, just printing one big book. They really have to put some thought to what they put together, but it works fine. My little recipe for cooking, what are the prerequisites to do such a thing? At this point, I would like to invite all of my colleagues have a go at it um, because the obstacles aren't so uh, big. There are many service providers who can help you. And my little shop window, um, if you actually work with Horst Tuba, this is my selling you his shop window, then you have excellent prerequisites anyway. We need data. This is one of the prerequisites. Uh, customer behavior data, customer groups, uh, and range relations. This is also exciting. And then, of course, the customer structure and the shifts or the migrations. Um, it may well be that a customer actually um, changes cluster over time. It's a small group for us, but we actually take a close look. And probably a customer later needs another catalog. Condent, it needs to be well-structured. Then uh, accessories, uh, replacements, product links, that's nice to have. Then the recommendation engine, product recommendations for personalization. This is, of course, based on the online uh, idea. What uh, you looked at, um, uh, other people also bought this. Then the production know-how. Uh, this is... Um, means what does it take to really print it on paper? So, so if you don't have any customer data, then you can make some assumptions, well-founded assumptions. When we started, we said, well, we assume that it should be it should work like this. At times, um, we we hit the bullseye at others we didn't. But it's a good way to get started uh, uh, once you have not collected your customer data. If you don't have any content, start with a whitelist. We did mailings uh, with 15 articles and then we started small by optimizing the content. So selection on top items. And if you don't have a recommendation engine, it's not necessary for clustering. And uh, you can also use an online reco to start with. We uh, saw that we had so many offline data about our customers that uh, it was uh, uh, too much. Uh, the online reco observes the click behavior, the session. We had collected data over years on end, a huge data pool. And then we said, OK, we want to improve. We want to develop further. And uh, actually uh, started driving this topic with a partner. How do we get this data imported? This is really exciting. But if you don't have a recommendation engine to do cluster catalog, you don't really need it. 
and no production know-how? Well, <laughs> look around, you'll find plenty of service providers. Uh, the proof is in the pudding. Really important. This was the first uh, digitalized uh, or digitally printed uh, cover in 2015. What you don't see too well is that the quality was pretty poor due to inkjet printing. This has improved so much. A little story for this one. On the inside of the cover, there was a transparent cover. Like um, a sleeve, transparent sleeve. The digital printer, or rather the image we used back then, uh, was taken from the internet. We printed it and uh, didn't use a single drop of ink because it was just a, a white sheet of paper plus a text. It was, it was simply not there, but it sold well nevertheless. In so far, so digital printing ink is uh, expensive too, so it's not recommendable, but it worked. The, the image was completely gone, the price was there, uh, <laughs> the text was there, and the customer bought the product nevertheless. The cover, uh, the inner part was still the standard, and we only personalized uh, the cover uh, in digital printing, then actually um, changed over to laser printing, which improved the quality substantially. Here you can see uh, uh, three uh, uh, compilations, small one, two big ones, and we didn't see a difference. We compared this with the standard version and said, works. Doesn't it work with the personalization? We've actually selected the right products and we've invested so much effort and we couldn't see a change in the, in the shopping behavior between the two versions, the personalized ones and the non-personalized ones. Um, um, our thesis is that, um, the, uh, that there's too little room for the customer to understand that this is really a personalized selection of products. With the cluster catalog, this works fine. With the 276-page catalog, we generated slightly more turnover than with these absolutely personalized catalog. This is what the address uh, feature looks like. It's not always attractive. You could improve the design, but but when it comes to the uh, customer use or usage, it works fine. Product managers said, oh, do I really have to select a product to include the address? They will throw it away anyway. Um, the, it doesn't generate any turnover, so I won't give you a highlight item anyway. Okay, we'll ask the machine to select the right product. Seven times the turnover with the featured address. The product managers can no longer select the products, now we <laughs> allow the machines to do that, but it works. Then partners on site with the right region featured. This is also included, so services are included in these, uh, this, these personalized versions. So customers really know that's their partners. Mailings, mail shots. Uh, cool shit, this is what my colleague said. Because it generated substantially higher sales. This, this is this transparent sleeve, can you see it? Yeah, it's shown there at the, at the top but now with a proper image in it. 15 <laughs> products max included. This is just a trigger prompting, prompting customers, and it works ever so well. On the one uh, side, we've got the catalog and the main catalog, the big book. With 1,500 pages, we saw the new version, the new version with the 276 uh, pages, and there is a 32-page catalog. And th below that, there is a mail shot. So uh, uh, we actually stack our customers. Um, we say this customer is worth only a mailing, 
uh, fact is that the circulation is going up and that the, the triggers are increasing. And this is really in, uh, important because uh, the triggers are more important than the extension, the size. It may be different for you, but it works for us. Hey, we're Schaefer Shop, uh, oh, we're still here, we have an offer for you, buy from us. And this was a test run. We did a hybrid catalog. Let me rephrase. The yellow part uh, is personalized really specifically for the customer, for the shopper. Then we've used the uh, blue modules. And in the middle, there's a static part that is the same for each and every one. We said if uh, we actually uh, combine personalization with clustering with the standard items, interesting outcome. It was uh, printed digitally at the end of the day, but didn't produce a result. We do not know exactly why this was so. We also tried to replace the bigger catalog with this, which didn't work either. So we have not really located the, the right cutoff point. Um, so we do not know yet uh, which size of catalog to send to which customer. So this is a discussion we're having time, at, uh, time and again. I mean, when paper prices <laughs> change, this is like a setting skew, screw. We um, are only second best if we send out too many catalogs. But we know that we're very close to the right solution. We were all uh, really exuberant uh, when we uh, uh, posted this, uh, sent this, but there was no effect. Happens when, when you do tests, but uh, we will carry on. Uh, what What's next? Good question. This is a question. I, I w will we really dissolve the the triggering chains uh, prompting customers to buy? But let, let's just imagine we know which product can we sold to which customer. Then it would be exciting to find out at which time um, you should do it. This uh, rigid uh, January, March, May uh, grid. <laughs> for sending catalogs um, is not always a good fit. When we used to do the big book, we quickly saw that 1,500 pages uh, actually trigger sales um, to a certain level, to a certain platform, and then the next one is actually sent out. So customers just take to the catalog when they need it. Uh, at present, uh, there's also a threshold that you should not fall short of. At present, the small catalogs are also kept for about six months. And we can see the customer has not actually dumped it. They're still uh, placing orders based on this catalog. But if the catalog gets too small, I could well imagine that it is no longer relevant and it no longer works. But dissolving the time grid, wouldn't it be cool to know when is the right time to send out the catalog that contains exactly what the customer needs? We th there's still room for improvement. We'll see. And that was it for me. I would like to thank you for your attention. It was uh, I enjoyed uh, speaking to you, and I don't know whether there are any questions for me, and uh, questions that I can answer <laughs> preferably. Yeah, there's a show of hand. The classical argument in favor of a fat catalog, when, uh, when, it, when the first people started to remove the catalog, the classical argument in favor of the fat uh, catalog was because we know that the customer buys for this and this reason. 
but uh, the, the knock-on effect uh, is, uh, what discussions did you have and how did you deal with the situation where you put customers into a cluster and then they move, change clusters, because the argument is if I show the customer something, I cement their role in the cluster. How did you handle this? Go back, give me a minute. This was the page. What you see is that we complete at the back end with a short module so that the whole range can still be seen. Uh, let's look at one cluster. The industrial customer, they need warehousing equipment, but uh, they're also shown the chairs and the height of adjustable desks. Um, so we, will, we want to make the, the full bandwidth visible. That means you provide the browsing material, yeah. Exactly. exactly, exactly. And what, uh, at what time intervals do the 276 page uh, catalogs, uh, what are they printed? Twice a year we stuck to uh, the uh, cycle, but we've just changed the makeup. I have a question concerning the printing. You talk, you mentioned the paging um, and the table of contents. It doesn't seem to, to me to be an easy task. Yes, uh, we left it out. <laughs> but the response was astonishing. With the except of one call from a, f a field service guy who said, where's the list of contents that's gone somehow? Nobody um, uh, found this difficult. With our technical possibilities, we couldn't, we couldn't do it. We couldn't draw up a proper list of contents. And this is why we said, well, it takes so much uh, effort that we will simply leave it out. Pagination, same thing. Uh, each. I had to exclude some of the information because my boss said, well, uh, uh, don't give away too much information. You can leave the uh, uh, colored boxes, that's fine. But uh, it would normally say that uh, each module has a letter, a name, and that actually ends up in the pagination. Because our field service guys said, if a customer tells me, page 32, and he theoretically has uh, 16 different options to find page 32, then this is stupid. And this is why there's a letter, and then the pagination also works. Uh, our customers accepted it, and our uh, back office says it works, and the field service guys have also understood now. A uh, short question concerning the recall. Online, offline, combined with another, what did you do in this respect? Well, uh, we have an in-house development now uh, that we uh, did with, with a service provider. Okay, okay. <laughs> Comment off the mic. The six variants, were these uh, for the German market only, or do you take these six variants and translate them for the various languages, or do you have variants for each country? We uh, have a different composition uh, per country. The cluster models are the same. We can also do cl 13 clusters. Uh, but uh, this is a horror story for production, and this is why we agreed on the six cluster model. And it also works uh, in a similar fashion in other countries. Smaller countries uh, often only get one version. If the customer base doesn't allow for more, but the clusters are the same, just the compilation differs at times because other uh, categories of uh, uh, products uh, are in the forefront. So let me do, do this. Uh, Hoskins remains seated. Thank you very much for the presentation. Now, if you want to get yourself a cup of coffee, we will continue with digital publishing report with Stefan Meyer. But 
uh, the presentations downstairs are also starting, so take the program with you and look for the, the presentations that are interesting.